And up next, we will examine the legacy of Pablo Escobar. He was one of the most notorious drug lords in Colombia, and his son is trying to get on the right side of the law and the right side of history now. That was Colombia in 1989 at the very moment when gunmen assassinated a charismatic presidential candidate. The killing was ordered by the drug lord Pablo Escobar. And that scene is part of a remarkable new film, Sins of My Father. The documentary, which has not been seen before, is about the secret reconciliation between Escobar's sons and the sons of some of his father's victims. The film's director, Nicola Entel, joins me now here. So, welcome. Thank and you. this is an extraordinary thing that you've, you've, you've tried to profile and you've tried to, to, to create in this film, the, the notion of reconciliation. How on earth did that come to you? Why did you think this would be even possible that Pablo Escobar's son would want to reconcile with the sons of those people his father ordered killed? I was first approached by a friend in Colombia who wanted me to do a documentary on Pablo Escobar. But on our first brainstorming meeting, and I don't know really how or why, I had this idea that we had to get together the sons of Pablo Escobar with the sons of Luis Carlos Galán and Rodrigo Lara Bonilla, who were Escobar's most prominent victims. And we started this knowing that it was impossible, but since in their sons we encountered a group of extraordinary young people, somehow the impossible became possible. Why did Escobar go after those two politicians? Was it the general mayhem of the time, or was it specific? It was specific. In 1983, or 1982 actually, Escobar first decided when he went into politics, Escobar ran for Congress, he decided to support these two young politicians that at the time had founded a new party uh, under the premise that Colombians' politics needed to be renovated. When these guys discovered who Escobar was, they exposed him from the party and they started a fight with Escobar that resulted first in Lara's assassination and then in Galán's. Okay, so how did you convince, or how did Escobar's son convince the sons of the others to actually meet him? The only thing I did was being patient. These are truly some great guys. And by working with them, taking my time, doing my homework, studying, listening to them, eventually the son of Pablo Escobar asked me to deliver a letter to the sons of Lara and Galan and this meeting, getting all of them getting together, was just a, re a response to that gesture. So Juan Pablo Escobar, the son of Pablo Escobar, and the son of Rodrigo Lagra, who you just mentioned, whose assassination was ordered, have now met for the first time on your film. We want to show a little snippet of that and then continue our conversation. It's very difficult to desligar all these questions. There are apellidos de por medio, there are families, there are seres queridos, there la terrible muerte de tu padre, eh, finalmente somos todos huérfanos. No podemos continuar con esta ola de rencor porque si no vamos a seguir en la misma. Mierda, sí, 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 seguimos sí, en la misma. Sí. En la misma. Pasado es duro, pero lo importante es que miremos para, para adelante. Por eso. Usted es un hombre bueno, usted es un hombre de paz, yo soy un hombre bueno, soy un hombre de paz. Eso es para adelante, hermano. <risa> hombre, la verdad que... It's very emotional. It almost looks too good to be true. Is it really possible that these sons can reconcile and it can actually make a difference? I think it is, because I, I was there. And I think in the case of uh, Rodrigo, who was there meeting with Juan Pablo Escobar, it's also been fair. He's also been fair to his father's legacy, because that was also the kind of person his father was. And you brought Juan Pablo back to Colombia. Yes. Surely everybody was after him. No one recognized him. How did you get him back in and keep him safe? After his father's death, he was given a new identity for security reasons. Mm -hmm. He is now Sebastián Marroquín. He has a new passport. 
And although first he was afraid and he told me, I'm never going to go back to Colombia, three years into the process, after Rodrigo's gesture of coming to Argentina, he agreed to return to Colombia. It was a very big gesture by Rodrigo. What does he expect to be the fallout from this? Where will this lead for Colombia? Rodrigo and the Sons of Galán, they are all politicians. And I think they believe they are living up to their father's le legacies by doing this. I, I think they're very sincere. And, and the complexities of Escobar and the young Escobar and his father and all these, uh, you know, the whole criminality around it. How did you broach that in, in your report and going after him? In a way, the film is two films for the price of one, which I guess is perfect for these times. Half of the film portrays Pablo Escobar especially through the eyes of his son. And the other half is about Sebastian's attempts to reach to these other sons and them accepting his, his attempts and finally getting together. And where do you hope this will put Colombia? I really don't know. I, I was born in Argentina, I'm not Colombian. So I, I really want to try to let the film speak for itself in, instead of being the one saying that. And the film in its climax, which we haven't seen and we haven't shown, will show the big reconciliation scene. Is that right? Absolutely. I think actually this is the first time anyone in Colombia is hearing that Sebastian was there last October. All right. Well, on that note, thank you for giving us that thank news and thank you for me. joining us. And Sins of My Father will have its international premiere next month at the International Documentary Festival of Amsterdam. You can see more of the film online today on our website, cnn.com slash Amanpour. So please join us there.